Speaking of old mate Giggles up in Queensland, he's out again buying votes, this time promising free lunches for school kids. Every Queensland state primary student will get free lunch every day if Labor is re-elected in a promise that will only cost taxpayers $2 billion a year. Joining us now for more on this is Nationals MP Keith Pitt. Keith, good to see you as always. Look, the miles free for all continues. He always says that it's free, uh, but the reality is it's not because taxpayers are the ones paying for other kids' lunches now. How do you think this is going to work? It's absolutely farcical. <laughs> Just before I came on, I had a quick look to see what the biggest school is in Queensland. It's Marsden State High, 3,700 kids. Can you imagine trying to put them through and feed them in, what, 45 minutes uh, in a school day, five days a week? Uh, what they're trying to do here is that it's communism 101. So they want everyone to rely on the state for a job. They, they want to uh, rely on the state for their education. Now they want uh, everyone to rely on the state for the food supply. And they want to replace mums and dads and grandmas and grandpas and brothers and sisters who might make lunches and help provide them for kids with public servants. No school's got the infrastructure to do this. It is a joke. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being one of the contractors, though, Keith, in line for uh, all this guaranteed money. I want to talk to you about something else that happened over the weekend. A group of white supremacists held a rally in the New South Wales regional town of Cowra. We had 50 blokes dressed in black, many with their faces covered, chanting, Australia for the white man, the rest must go. Keith, if you want to talk about high immigration numbers, there's a way to do it. This ain't it. Well, whatever rock they crawled out from under, they should go back underneath it. But don't forget, uh, people like this and th these types of activists, hardcore activists, have been emboldened and empowered by the fact that the Albanese government and other state governments won't crack down, enforce the law, and they've seen people who, have out, who are out supporting listed terrorist organisations. No wonder they think they can get away with anything. Uh, we need the police to enforce the laws of this country, and if they're not strong enough, well, we can change them at a federal level. But th this is unacceptable, and it looks like things are getting worse out on the ground. Uh, and for me, uh, as an Australian, I, I just think that's unacceptable. No, I completely agree. It really, really is unacceptable, Keith. Now, we were just talking before, it's been uh, 12 months, can you believe, since the failed voice referendum, which sought to divide us, and in return, 60% of us said, uh, no, we don't want that sort of division. What do you think is the voice's legacy now, one year on? Uh, well, I actually want to look at this in a different way. I mean, in, in my electorate, it was almost 80% said no. But what they did, they actually said yes. That they said yes to Australia being one people. Uh, they said yes to our nation being one country. And I think if you ask them, the overwhelming majority would say that we should have one flag. So I, I just think the Australian people made a decision. They provided ample information and time. They were well informed and they rejected the proposition. Now, I know people find that hard to accept if they're on the yes side of the argument, but the mob don't get it wrong. Uh, you can't tell the Australian people they got it wrong. Uh, it's a decision they've made, and I, and I think it's the right one. Yeah, absolutely. Keith Pitt, appreciate your time this evening. Thank you.